Uh, joining us now, the chairman of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, Senator Gary Peters of Michigan. Well, it's good to have you on the show. Congratulations. Democrats maintain the majority. Were you surprised? And what happened? Well, uh, we are very, very happy, uh, but we weren't uh, surprised. I mean, we were confident uh, going into the election. We know things were going to be very, very tight, and we had anticipated that from the very beginning. If you would have asked me a year and a half before the election, are these going to be very close elections? I would have said absolutely. They're going to be in the margin. Uh, they are all in battleground states, and by definition, they're going to be very close. Uh, that's why uh, we certainly worked uh, to make sure we had a very aggressive ground game to turn out uh, our voters. But certainly, uh, we were in a really good position, we thought, uh, particularly given uh, the difference between the candidates uh, that were running. There was a wide gulf uh, in the candidates in each of our key states with very uh, talented uh, Democratic candidates and incumbents versus very extreme candidates on the other side, which uh, gave us a, a great contrast going into the, the final moments uh, of the election. And then with the DSCC, what my work was uh, with my team was uh, primarily to invest in a very robust ground campaign, which is critically important in a midterm where you always have a drop off of votes. In fact, it's the first time in modern history that the DSCC, we invested more in the ground operation than we did in our independent expenditures. Uh, it's certainly been my belief that when you're in these tight races, uh, that's going to be the difference of a point or two. And that, that investment certainly uh, paid off uh, and then some in this race. And but now we're, uh, although we're very happy that we are at uh, 50, uh, we are not done. Uh, we're going to be doing the same types of campaigning and the same effort uh, very aggressively in Georgia. I'm confident we're going to have 51 senators uh, after December 6th. And Senator, good morning. Your state uh, of Michigan really illustrates all the points you've just made. When you look down from the governor's race to the secretary of state and to the legislature, which now is controlled by Democrats, something that hasn't happened in several generations. As you look at the state of Michigan specifically, what was the difference there? I think a lot of observers were stunned by the extent to which abortion played into voters' decisions. Not that it played, but many people thought it would. But boy, it was a top issue, if not the top issue for many voters. Uh, there, there's no question about that. Uh, we had a proposition on the ballot to put it in the Constitution. It drove folks out. There was energy, and particularly energy with young voters. Uh, you know, just to, to give you an example, uh, on the campuses of Michigan State University and the University of Michigan, uh, students were lining up. Uh, we had same-day registration because of previous changes. You could register and vote. And students uh, who were there at 8 o'clock when the polls closed could still, uh, could still vote uh, if they stayed in line. And I believe the last students uh, voted around 2 a.m. They wow. stayed in line for hours. It was an inspiration to all of us that these young students, particularly women, but uh, certainly uh, men as well, uh, said that we're not going to let them take away fundamental rights from us. I don't care how long I stand in this line. I'm going to make sure I register uh, and I vote. That type of energy made a huge difference in Michigan, and quite frankly, it made a difference in all of our uh, all of our key states because we had such a contrast in candidate positions on that issue. It certainly motivated people to get out and make sure that their voice was heard. Senator Adrian Elrod's here with a question for you, Adrian. Hi, Senator. Congratulations on such a great election cycle. Um, I've got a question about some of the Republicans who, especially the election deniers, who have basically dissuaded some of the Republican base from voting early or voting absentee by calling it fraudulent or saying that, you know, there, there's, there's, uh, that the process is not working the way that it should if they vote absentee. Do you think that had an impact at all on some of these races, especially in close states, in favor of the Democrats? Well, I, I think it, it, it does have an impact, particularly in a, in a midterm, uh, when you already have a drop off of votes. So it's certainly important to make sure that uh, the, the, system, the, the way to vote is as easy as possible and convenient for people who are very busy with their everyday lives uh, to have an opportunity to make sure that they are casting uh, that vote. Uh, it is uh, an important tool to allow uh, us to reach out to voters and make sure that they're voting. It was part of our, certainly our ground operation. We could track uh, who we knew were our supporters and track whether or not they had voted. And if they hadn't, uh, uh, certainly gently remind them uh, how important it is to make sure that they're getting out to, to vote. So it is a very important uh, part of a ground campaign. And uh, the fact that Republicans uh, are, are telling people not to do that, uh, which is a little curious because uh, in the past, a lot of absentee votes tended to trend Republican. It's certainly different now. 
Uh, Senator, uh, do you have a, the impression that uh, any of your Republican colleagues in the Senate are learning the lessons from this election that to you and me and others seem obvious about uh, Donald Trump, about Trumpism, about election denial. Uh, is that sinking in at all across the aisle? Uh, well, I hope it doesn't. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I, uh, I hope they don't get, they don't catch on uh, to all of this. It is, uh, I think, it is uh, pretty clear, uh, and uh, this election certainly spoke uh, very loudly uh, to that. And, and I think uh, the American people, and I believe this in my heart and soul, that people want folks to come together. The politics of division uh, can uh, can it sometimes be powerful, but it's also very destructive to this amazing democratic republic that we have. Voters are saying, "Gets get together. We've got serious problems that we have to face uh, as a country. We need to come together. We have to bring ideas together and be united. And this country has always been at its strongest when we're united. And that's why uh, I certainly hope uh, that we are able to do that. And my colleagues can understand that as we go forward into this next term. And even though we're, uh, we're at least 50 Democrats, perhaps 51, uh, we certainly want to work uh, with our Republican colleagues to do good things for the American people and to show the American people that we can function as a constitutional democracy in a way that has a meaningful impact on everybody's life. Senator, let me ask you about that perhaps 51, that last Senate race that's still out there, the runoff in a couple of weeks in the state of Georgia. There are some people who have said a little bit of the energy is taken out of this because you already do have control of the United States Senate. But what would a 51st vote mean to you versus a 50-50 split? Uh, well, well, certainly uh, 51 helps us uh, in many ways. Uh, one, it, it, uh, from the committee process right now, committees are 50-50, and uh, if you don't have uh, an extra vote, uh, it takes a lot more time to move to the floor, to, to move pieces of legislation uh, forward. Also, having an extra vote, you know, clearly uh, if there's an individual senator in our caucus that may have a different view, uh, the, they, can, uh, they can certainly... Uh, express that, but they're not the deciding vote. It's not so that one individual senator becomes the deciding vote on what we do collectively uh, as a caucus. So it certainly provides additional flexibility to move uh, uh, agenda forward uh, for the country. Chairman of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, Senator Gary Peters of Michigan, thank you very much for being on this morning. Great to be with and you. Thank you.